Dopamine is this incredibly powerful molecule that allows us to buffer the effort process. It allows us to be in effort longer and it allows us to actually eventually enjoy the process of effort. And not think about the reward, but just say, oh, I'm enjoying the process. Right. Well, you just described the first step. The first step in learning to attach dopamine to the effort process, which is the key operation in order to succeed, is to be very careful about how much you focus on the end goal. And so if your thoughts, if you're having a hard time controlling your thoughts, your feelings and emotions, you're feeling triggered, you're feeling like everything's bearing down on you, do something to shift your physiology so that you can approach that challenge from a different stance. If you were to instruct someone to do the worst possible things in the morning to set their day up for failure, what would they be? Staying in bed, curtains drawn, passively scrolling on social media. They're drinking coffee too early in the day. They aren't getting into any kind of movement. They're sort of making a cup of coffee while texting. And they're not being deliberate or intentional with the things that they're doing. They're just allowing the morning to kind of come and take them wherever the wind blows. That's right. And I have to say, even though I describe my routine accurate, my morning routine accurately, if I were to really optimize it, I would. What does your morning routine look like at the moment? Morning routine is, and I have to be careful here because whenever I've described my routine in a little bit of detail, people always say, I can't believe you don't go to the bathroom. And it's like, well, of course. I, I, so I want to <laughs> put be, my pants yeah, on. Exactly, my right on. foot, left foot. So yeah. I want to be clear. I, yeah, I take care of my basic functions. Um, but when I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight. Uh, so I'm going to get sunlight in my eyes. For the, you know, I'll probably go into the grave saying this. So forgive me if people have heard me say this before, but. The single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it takes about 10 minutes or so. Um, if you live in a cloudy area, if you're in the UK in the winter, yes. Or the summer. Or the summer, maybe you resort to some artificial light as a replacement, but as much as one can get bright, natural, and if not natural, artificial light in your eyes early in the day without sunglasses, Contacts and eyeglasses are fine. Don't try and do it through a window or windshield. It's going to take far too long. This sets in motion a huge number of different neurobiological and, and hormonal cascades that are good for you, reduces stress late at night, offsets cortisol, a million different things really that are good for you. So I get that. So then I come back inside and then I do not drink caffeine right away. It's important in many ways to delay caffeine enough so that you can clear out some of the chemical signals in the brain and body that lead to a that lead to a feeling of fatigue. So the longer you're awake, the more a molecule called adenosine builds up in your system. And when you sleep, you push that adenosine level back down. When you wake up in the morning, that adenosine level can be zero, but oftentimes there's still some hanging around. Caffeine is an adenosine antagonist. It blocks adenosine function. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's effectively what it does. So if you wake up and you've got 20% of your adenosine has still hasn't been cleared out, that's sort of a drowsiness that you woke up with. Mm -hmm. Then you go and you drink your coffee and you crush that, that uh, ability of adenosine to have that effect, but it hasn't gone away. So that when your coffee wears off mid morning, now that adenosine is there and you feel like there's a mid morning crash or an afternoon crash. So I delay my caffeine intake for about 90 and ideally 120 mm. minutes after I wake up. Because in that way, you bring your adenosine level down very, very low to zero, and then you don't get this rebound crash in the afternoon. For years, I would get this post-lunch crash, and I thought maybe I'm eating too much for lunch, right. which I probably was, or maybe I'm eating the wrong <laughs> foods. Turned out it was all related to my timing of caffeine. And your system learns how to wake up naturally. Right. You get the natural cortisol and adrenaline. Release. Give it the time. Yeah. Give it the time. And people hate this one because it's, it's a little painful for the caffeine addicts, but I'm a pretty serious caffeine addict and I embrace that. And I'll tell you, it also makes the joy of the coffee so much greater. You're like waiting for yeah. that, you're saving exactly. and you're like, ah, oh, my it, first oh, it tastes so much better. Um, <laughs> and that relates to the dopamine system, which I know we're going to talk Ooh, about yes. later. Just how triggering are our phones when it comes to dopamine? Okay, great question. Uh, we often hear that, you know, that social media getting dopamine hit after dopamine hit. When we first get on social media after a 
for the first time or after a long period of time, the amount of dopamine that's released we think is quite substantial. It's novel. Remember, dopamine is about novelty, surprise, and the sense that we are on some exciting track. That's what dopamine is really about. It puts us into states of readiness, anticipation, looking, seeking, etc., almost always for things outside the confines of our skin. One of the key takeaways from that book, uh, Dopamine Nation, that I've incorporated in my own life is that there are certain activities like cold water that create long-lasting arcs of dopamine. Those can be very useful for putting us into long-lasting motivational states. These are not big peaks and troughs. These are the pain of the cold water followed by this long, long arc of dopamine. Wonderful, it's a kind of an antidepressant positive motivator, natural stimulus. I always say, if you don't have access to an ice bath, cold showers, yes, will work. If you have a shower that doesn't get cold enough, keep in mind that the original studies showing this dopamine increase had people get into 60 degree water, which is not that cold, for 45 minutes to an hour. So your water bill might go up, but you could just draw a kind of cool bath and get in that up to the neck. So, because I realize there are sometimes some cost barriers to people, they, not everyone has an ice bath. And I have to say, even though I describe my routine accurate, my morning routine accurately, if I were to really optimize it, and I, I've done this from time to time, I would get up, I would hydrate, and I would immediately exercise. I would use that early, you know, peaking of the cortisol response that comes with waking to get the body into action, sort of Jocko Willink style, right? 4.30, I always see his posts, but I see them at 7 a.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah, precisely. <laughs> Let's say somebody really wants to take on a fitness routine. They hate running or they want to lose weight in a, in a healthy way, this kind of thing. So we've all heard the example, well, you put your shoes by the door on day one, day two, you put them on, day three, you go out the door, day four, you walk around the block and then, you know, and then eventually like they're running marathons. Okay, <laughs> great, but to sustain that behavior or even to make the, the behavior pleasurable and to give you energy, the key is to subjectively reward those steps. So it's not gonna be, mm. let's say I go out and I run a mile and my goal is to run 10 miles in a few weeks. The key is, as you're in the strain of that mile, the hard part, you wanna tell yourself, this is the good part. This is the part that gives me energy, and I'll be very surprised if people don't actually feel like they could continue further. So it's a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single, is made up of you know single steps, but the key is to reward the harder steps not the easier ones and not the ones where you get the thing that you want. Don't reward yourself for putting your shoes on and taking a step outside. You could if that was a huge barrier for you. If it was very hard. If it was very hard for you. But but running the 10 miles that's is hard. Right. Find the wall and push a little bit further through that wall and reward that process. These are the, this is the hard part because that's when adrenaline, norepinephrine are getting maxed out and that's when you have an opportunity to bring dopamine in and s teach those neural pathways to slam that back mm -hmm. down. The other element that's really important to plasticity is this deep rest phase and it's associated with the release of the molecule neuromodulator serotonin. Serotonin is a reward molecule just like dopamine mm -hmm. except that it's re released in the brain in response to the subjective experience that we have enough resources. So when we eat a big meal or we enjoy, even better, when we enjoy a meal with friends or family and it just feels like one of those incredible evenings, you know, you're reset. It's that feeling of, of being reset as an antidepressive effect. When we are, um, when you hold you know, if you hold your child or a, or a partner that you love or your dog, there's this feeling of having enough. And so whereas dopamine is really the molecule that makes us in, uh, look at things outside the boundaries of our skin, like to be in pursuit of things, it really is the pursuit motivation molecule. Serotonin is really about feeling like we have enough in our immediate environment. Mm. And it's so powerful because unless that dope, uh, that, excuse me, that serotonin box is checked off periodically, we cannot lean back into the dopamine outward pursuit process for very long. So we need serotonin. Absolutely. To feel more, what, complete, whole? Safe. Safe. You need to balance serotonin and dopamine, maybe across the day, maybe across the week. You know, I think in religious practices, um, all religions really, there's a kind of Sabbath, there's a rest period, you know, for many, many, or I think all of them. Um, that makes sense because there needs to be a renewal.